It's Virtual CES 2021 at geekazine.com. All right, here I have uh, Gus here, and uh, tell him your full name because I, I probably will not do well in, in pronouncing it. Yeah, it's uh, the most Dutch name you can get. It's Gijsdenbutter, and I'm uh, one of the co-founders of the company called SenseGlove. Okay, and uh, tell us a little bit about what SenseGlove is. Yeah, SenseGlove is a well a startup that enables you to touch uh, in virtual environments or to feel in virtual environments, to be exactly. And we do this by creating a wearable called the Sense Glove. And we give you two types of uh, feeling inside the virtual environments. Uh, the first one is something that is called force feedback. And with that, you actually feel restriction inside a virtual environment. So at the moment you grasp a virtual object, you feel restricted and you can feel the shape and the size and the density of that particular object that you're grasping. And we're combining that with something that we call vibro tactile feedback or just buzz motors, like the things you also have in your iPhone. And with that, you can give contextual cues, uh, like for example, if you're pushing a button or when you're uh, petting a surface, you can feel if that surface is rough or if that is smooth. And we combine that with uh, that we can track your hands in a virtual environment and then with these three technologies, you're fully able to interact in virtual reality in a similar way as you would do in real life situations. Okay, so this is uh, this is for the phone, or will this also be in a virtual a VR headset environment? No, this is this is fully for a virtu uh, virtual headset. So it's uh, really to be compatible with uh, head mounted displays, uh, as we call them, like the VR headsets. Do you have any uh, headsets that you're working with right now? Uh, with this? Yeah, so we're, the, the Sense Club is uh, usually compatible with all like um, normal headsets like the Oculus Quest uh, or with the HTC Vive, uh, well, just with all the major headsets. Uh, and especially, uh, well, we have two products on the market, which one we actually uh, launched uh, uh, this week in uh, on the digital CES. And, uh, well, the Sense Glove Nova, which is the new one that is compatible with the standalone headsets. And with the older uh, DK1, so the uh, exoskeleton is compatible with uh, all the like computer tethered headsets like the Oculus Rift S or the HTC Vive. Well, the exoskeleton is um, yeah a little bit more precise, has a little bit more uh, forces in there because of the design of it. But the usability of the glove form factor is obviously huge. Uh, you just put it on within five seconds, you're good to go. You're in your virtual training, for example. And you can have your lifelike interactions with the force and haptic feedback. I just purchased the Oculus Quest 2, which is a great headset. And they have that ability to, to set down the controllers and actually use your hands in that. It'd be nice to have gloves so I could actually do a little bit more than just pinch my fingers to pick up something. Uh, so that that's pretty exciting uh, being able yeah, to yeah, do because, like that. So. Because indeed, if you're now having the Quest 2 with the hand tracking, which is already amazing, but if you want to pick something up, you're just pinching or grasping through something by making a gesture. And by having force feedback inside your hands, you're really like restricted to uh, when you pick up an object, you really feel that an object is there uh, and that forces you to interact in a natural manner. Okay. Tell me about how it's uh, all cabled together. Is it going to be one tethered cable and then one cable to uh, the headset or, or how does that work? Yeah, so the Sense Glove Nova, so the new one, the glove version, uh, that's actually fully wireless. So it's just, just a Bluetooth connection to your headset or when you're using a tethered headset, uh, it's a Bluetooth connection to your computer. Uh, the old DK1 is uh, tethered with one USB cable to your computer, well, actually to a power box and then uh, to the computer. But with but the Nova goes, headset, you actually you don't goes, need the, any wires. Okay, but it goes to the computer and then the headset rather than the headset, then the computer, right? Uh, yeah, so if you're using a tethered headset, it goes first to the computer. But if you're using the Oculus Quest 2 for as an example, uh, you can just pair with your uh, yeah, Bluetooth module on uh, the Quest itself. Okay. What's the latency like when you when you're talking Bluetooth here? Yeah, when we're talking Bluetooth, we're talking about a 60 hertz uh, update rate, uh, and the round trip latency is about 20 milliseconds. Okay. So in regular gameplay, you probably you might see it every now and then, but not as much, correct? Yeah. So. Uh, ideally, you want to go up to a 10 millisecond latency, especially with the haptic side of it, and especially if you're doing multiplayer. Uh, but well, with the current state of the technology, uh, well, 60 hertz is, is really um, 
is something where we where where the the whole simulation is stable. So we're choosing between stability, st st well, stability, and uh, well, update rates, and well, uh, the best combination is to use sixty hertz at the moment. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the care of the gloves. Now, the exoskeleton probably was I don't want to say fragile, but it was probably more fragile than this new this new glove. Uh, tell us a little bit how people could, when they purchase something like this, how they would want to care for a, uh, a device like this. Yeah, well, the exoskeleton was already quite, um, yeah, robust. Let's say that way. Uh, you you don't want to drop it from a two meter uh, high distance, and then uh, yeah, well, probably it will break at some point at the floor. Uh, but while bumping into a wall, uh, we've seen people doing that, and it all survived. And uh, so it was already robust, but indeed the glove form factor uh, makes also the, the the type a little bit more soft. So it's indeed more robust. Okay. So um, if I accidentally punch a wall, it, it it might be able to survive a little bit. Yeah. The, so the glove one definitely. Uh, well, we've dropped it from uh, well two meters, and uh, well, it still survives. Uh, we did that ten times in a row or something like that. It still worked. As one of our drop tests, which is always fun to do. Yeah. Uh, the exoskeleton is indeed a little bit more fragile on that, so uh, yeah, you should be more careful uh, when handling with the exoskeleton. Okay. Um, let's talk a little bit about games and programs. Uh, do you have anything that is specific for these gloves yet, or? Yeah. So unfortunately, unfortunately, the gloves are really meant for business to business. Um, trainings environment uh, or, or like digital assembly uh, evaluation, those types of things. So yeah, as obviously the ultimate dream is to have it in in, in virtual reality games like Half-Life or something like that. Okay. Uh, but yeah, the 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 state of the, the current technology is really meant for B2B. Also the pricing there. So the new glove is a pre-order price of uh, $5,000, uh, which is obviously too expensive for, for gaming. But Not uh, we really I've seen people buy <laughs> buy some crazy stuff for gaming. Crazy. Yeah, stuff. true. And and we really encourage also um like especially arcade uh game developers uh to also take a look into uh, what can you actually do with haptics and with force feedback. So that's also really one of our uh like key competitive advantages compared to other uh well force and haptic feedback glove manufacturers that we really want to have it accessible for every professional use case and with professional use case we also consider the the arcade halls so uh, yeah that's definitely something uh, i also encourage these developers uh, to take a look at what can you actually do with our products and we also uh, for example with some uh, 5g demonstration projects uh, we also are actually uh, building small games uh, which are more fun uh, like we have a whack-a-mole demo where you can smile as well Take a hammer and and, and smash moles back into the <laughs> into nice. the scene. So these types of geeky uh, uh, gameplays we also have for like a demonstration customers, uh, like telcos who want to showcase what can I do with five G. Okay, so that's also so cool. You do fun. have some business to business programs that they can do, but it's mostly customizable, correct? Yeah. So um, usually, um, our the customers that we have. Uh, our program is herself, uh, either internally inside a company, there are VR developers in the company, or they are system integrators uh, who build, for example, VR training. And these system integrators or these developers inside the company use our uh, well, SDKs, most, most of the time in Unity or in Unreal, uh, to make uh, our glove compatible with their virtual reality environments that they've created. Uh, okay. So that's usually how they work. Uh, but we also provide uh, services to businesses uh, that already have a virtual environment or have a virtual reality training that we integrate a sense club for them as like a standard uh, project. Okay. Is it an open SDK or is it a closed SDK? It's as open as you get, uh, as you can get it. Uh, there's a few uh, DILs in there that, well, for example, the inverse kinematics model, we don't uh, allow you to access uh, and there's some, some some like vision based tracking uh, algorithms that are uh, proprietary but furthermore uh, you can actually access uh, almost everything until the well you can even create your own uh, waveforms um on the viral tactile motors that are in the in the gloves so, okay yeah, it's pretty but as somebody like me i could actually do some programming if i had the glove 
Right. Yeah, yeah. So if if you have uh, have some Unity skills or have some uh, C plus plus skills uh, combined with some Unreal Engine uh, experience, then uh, well, you could just uh, build your own scenarios right away. All right. Well, you did you did mention the price. It's five. Was it five thousand for the exoskeleton version or five thousand for this new version? Yes, the five thousand dollars is for the new version, and the exoskeleton is actually a three and a half thousand euro. So. Roughly four thousand uh, US dollars. Okay, um, and how do people uh, get a hold of you to find out a little bit more? Yeah, if you'd like to know more, uh, you can visit our website at senselove.com. And uh, well, there's uh, everything explained about the new glove, and obviously also about the old glove. So okay. to make a little bit of a distinction there as well, uh, if you're looking really for uh, like VR training, uh, VR uh, design evaluations, you should go for the new glove. It's really easy to set up. Uh, within your uh, your within your business, and if you're more at the research side, or if you're more at uh, controlling a robot from a distance, so we call that telerobotics, uh, then the uh, exoskeleton I think is the most suitable device because of its uh, accuracy uh, that's needed for like either research or uh, controlling robots from a distance. Okay. One last question, and that is, uh, we talked a lot about the VR, but you did mention uh, things like the iPhone. I'm assuming that you'll be able to use the control for just about any, you know, if you set up a laptop or anything like that, you could use that exoskeleton uh, or the glove for uh, anything that you could figure out, correct? Yes. So, so if it's if it's Unity compatible, uh, well, you can make it for you can make it for anything. But really, the uh, combination between the visual and the physical what you feel uh, that is really the cutting edge where uh, this haptic device uh, is well coming uh, is showcasing its best capabilities so if you're in a 2d screen it's not the feeling that you really would like to have or you can not distinguish whether actually you're you're petting an animal or whatever but if you have that 3d visual against uh, well tied to it then uh, it's when a one-on-one makes a, a whole great experience. All right. Well, there you go. Well, th- thank you very much, Gus, for your time. And once again, what's the website? Website is senselove.com. And uh, pretty excited to, to see uh, well, the viewers uh, back on our website. And uh, feel free to contact us uh, via there. And, uh, well, happy to tell you more. All right. Perfect. Well, thanks again, Gus. And uh, take care. Thank you so much. You too. Thanks a lot for watching this video for the CES Virtual by Geekazine. If you're over on geekazine.com or youtube.com forward slash geekazine, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, hit the bell notification so you know when the next video comes out. Until next time, you guys geek out and take care.